Now Mick is one of nine kids. And you've only got to look at him to know the other eight are jockeys because they couldn't get <laughs> Here, Here's a message from the Mick Nolan family. Get your reputation. It's more than the finest room. It's here to carry. Hi, Mike. This is Dan here. And I'd like to congratulate you on this young great night of football. And I'd like to wish you all the best and hope that you have success this year and pull off another friendship, same as you did last year. Just before things, I'd like to remind you that you must not forget your early days of football when you played with the South Wanderers. And in those days, you found it very hard to get a game of football, mainly because you were too slow. And, and you know, you couldn't have to get the top of the ball in the ball there. Mr. and Mrs. Noel. Mick, I believe the club was also once part of a dairy farm and you used to help milk the cows every day, obviously you sample some of the product. <laughs> Any comment about the cows? No, but I know they used to give me the fits on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Mick, I believe the club was many people who, know, who now know of your achievements in football could be excused in thinking that things have always come naturally for you, but that was not the case. In fact, in your early teens, after not being able to get a game in school, as your father just mentioned, sounds a bit like some of the players yesterday couldn't get a game in school, <laughs> you try out with the local juniors club, South Wanderers. You train with the club for three years without getting a game, and also not able to get a game at school. You knew you loved football. When Ray Burns persuaded you to try out with the local seniors at Tarawindji, you jumped at the chance. There were plenty of local experts around who said you'd never make the grade. This didn't deter you one bit, for in your two seasons with Tarawinji, you won the best and fairest trophy in both years. In fact, in one early game, you played against your old school coach who wouldn't give you a, a, a game. What's his name and what do you think of him now? Very good judge of a football. <laughs> <laughs> you played on him that day? Well, uh, I'd been at training every night as long as I could remember at school and I'd never got a game, couldn't even get in the seconds and my chance came as his opponent playing against him and by hell did I give him a hard time. <laughs> I still didn't play second football, they put me straight into the first and there was only one game to go so I, I can admit to at least playing one game of school football. <laughs> Research is wrong. Research is wrong, one game. <laughs> I'll give you that one, I reckon we've got 99 out of 100 for the rest of the research. Ray Burns again showed great faith in your ability and helped you with your move to the big time. Wangaratta Rovers in the Ovens and Murray League. Ray Byrne must have been a very influential player, a man in your playing career then. Any comment on Ray Burns? Well Ray was, uh, he was my first coach. Not really my first coach, but the first coach that I played under. <laughs> He, uh, he had played with Richmond and um, you know, certainly had a big influence in my early days and you know, I'll always remember him. I did get a message from him just recently about a player that's coming up here next year. I see that he still uh, is looking after me and I know that you know, I'll always thank him a heck of a lot for the start that uh, I had in football. Nick, it was during this time one very special person came into your life. Your lovely wife, Nettie, who you married in March 1972. Here's Nettie with the, with the son, Ricky, nine, Danny, four, and Dale, 18 months.
at home, they just said, who's that big bloke out there? <laughs> Nanny? <laughs> this is the shelf, Mick. Listen to me. <laughs> Nanny, uh, I believe he's a pretty easy catch. Oh, terribly easy. <laughs> Actually, he was really hard in those days. He was very shy, believe it or not. Um... <laughs> Nick said still in. I think the player might disagree. Um, actually, the night I met Nick, um, I was trying to do the big con, which he didn't realise. Um, for two months after I... <laughs> oh, he just worked out who it is. <laughs> For the first two months we went out together, a mutual friend of ours uh, used to do all the telephoning and all the dating, um, would tell me when Mick was arriving and the nights, that happened two or three nights a week for the first two months. The phone calls stopped coming but Mick kept coming, thank God. What about the, uh, the first date? Must have been a, an auspicious occasion. Um, yes, yeah, never to be forgotten. <laughs> Uh, the very first night we went out together, um, we were going to the drive-in. I assume... I said he was shy. Uh, the very... You only had a bush bike. <laughs> I assumed he would pick me up between 7 and half past 7 for the drive-in. Uh, 9 o'clock came, he hadn't arrived. Uh, so I whipped the makeup off and hopped it in my nighty. Um, <laughs> next thing there was a knock on the door and there was Mick with the great comment you might not have makeup off Nettie, aren't you ready to go to the drive in yet? Well, he was planning he didn't need makeup for I think. <laughs> and uh, it must have been a wonderful night when Mick finally got down on his bended knee and proposed it <laughs> Yes, well actually, uh, I waited for four years for that. <laughs> and fortunately, it was a leap year and I had to pop the question myself. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't waste any time actually, because three months later we were married. Yes, well I think they're going to pay for this, Nettie. Go away, they're going to pay Unless it is a pretty useful cricketer, he's a poor man's uh, Dennis Lilly looking at him there on the screen. <laughs> Uh, yes, Mick was very good with his cricket. Uh, we had one week, actually, to organise uh, the date of our wedding. Um, the cricket season finished one week. We had one week after that and the football season started. Um, unfortunately, there was a draw of the grand final of the cricket, which had to be replayed on the day that we were to be married. Uh, three of our best men, plus Mick, was in the team. Fortunately, Mick joined me that day. <laughs> and the three best men arrived after they'd finished batting. Still with their pants on, I hope. Now, listen, the, the cows, it must have been uh, you know, a great source of enjoyment that you and Mick were able to milk the cows together, together. Well, um, I call it a problem, actually. Mick's forgotten, obviously. In those days, we would all get together, um, our friends, and we would go on a barbecue on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, when the barbecue was over, the couples would pair off, and in those days you went parking in a car. <laughs> we didn't. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. Uh, Mick took me home and went and milked the cows, and I thought that was a problem. Any time he's good with tits, I believe him. <laughs> Nanny, <coughs> Nanny, I can see you've been a very understanding wife over the years because uh, Nick has devoted so much time to cows, football. <laughs> Nanny, I'd like uh, you and the boys to, uh, to take your seats now, sit back and enjoy what I'm sure is going to be a memorable evening for you. Thank you, Nettie. Thank you, boys. <laughs>